Todoist. It's an app that I've used pretty consistently for about the last eight years or so. Over my life, I've used many task managers, but I always come back to Todoist. And it's an application that's actually seeing quite a lot of development at the moment. A ton of big changes to the app's features have happened over the past 12 months. And I, for one, could not be happier. Everything they've done, it enhances the existing feature set in some way. It provides options for you within your existing workflows to do things more easily, more quickly. And they don't seem to be forcing you down a particular path to do things very differently. And I love it. Now, of all the updates that I've seen most recently, the one I like the most is the new filter options for your projects, for your lists. So we're going to look at these changes and I'm going to suggest a few further improvements that I hope the good people at Todoist take on board. You never know. So let's dive right in. Todoist has always enabled you to create filters for your tasks for as long as I've used the app as a subscriber and they are incredibly powerful, but there have always been some big issues. The power, you can filter your tasks by any combination of any different things that you can think of. Whatever can be conceived can be achieved, so they say. You can create filters by keyword, by due date, by labels, projects, sections, who it's assigned to, when it was created. You can filter by all of these things and by other things or by even more things. Now within that, there are also some pretty neat options for some of the more complex attributes of your tasks. You see, a task either has a label or it doesn't, but when it comes to things like dates, you can filter by pretty much anything you can think of. So a favorite of mine is a filter of tasks that are created over six months ago, but without a due date. That helps me spot those things that are in my system, but going nowhere. You can also stack different combos within the same filter. Now, most of the other apps that I've used, they allow you to filter to the same extent as Todoist does. But where Todoist stands out is the ability that it gives you to stack filters in sections within the filter that you create. So the first section of your filter will generate a filtered list of tasks that meets one set of criteria. The next section will filter can have its own and totally different set of filtering criteria. This enables you to create simple dashboards in Todoist to gather different information for different purposes all in one place. And I use this for my today's focus filter here. If I just show you what that looks like, it's a bit complicated because of um, something that you can learn about on this linked video up here. But I've got these different filters and where the comma is, it starts the next section of the filter. So let's just open that up and you'll see what it looks like. You've got my objectives for the day in the first section, that's today and at objective. Morning tasks in the second section, today and at morning, afternoon and then evening. So you can see you've got three sections within one filtered view. But these filters come with some weaknesses. The main one is complexity. It's often been said, even by Todoist's creator, that to get the most out of the filter system, you need some kind of advanced degrees in computer science or something, and this was a big problem. You see, the basics were pretty easy to grasp, but to create some of the more complicated filters was actually quite difficult. The first thing you had to do was write out the query in your filter box. You can't select options to filter by, and you need to know all of the different commands and functions. So you need to know for the created before one that you have to put a minus sign in front of it and write the word days. You need to know that projects is the hashtag. And if you want to do projects and all of the sub projects nested underneath it, then you need a double hashtag. You need to know that, for example, to ex exclude something, you put an exclamation mark in front of it and it will exclude things from that project or that label or that date. You need to know all of the different filters. You need to know all of the different commands. You need to know the language effectively of the filter query. So the different operators, you just have to know them, get it wrong and the filter doesn't work. 
Now there are some really helpful websites for this, for this kind of thing, and so it is possible to learn, but all of this takes time. And also, you could not filter tasks on the fly. You see, when something takes time, you don't do it on the fly to meet a short-term need. This was my biggest issue previously. You see, I had no problem investing the time to create a filter that I wanted to use again and again and again. But if it would help me, perhaps, to filter my list a bit for maybe the next half an hour or the next hour or a day or whatever, and only for that time, then it's just not worth it with the process before. You see, you had only two options. You either create a filter for the occasion that you won't need in the future, or you use the search bar. The search bar has all of the same capabilities as creating a filter, but it also requires the same level of complicated entry. And as it's a search, if you navigate away from it, you lose it all and you have to put it in again unless you save it as a filter. You see, more often than not, I just didn't bother. What I longed for was the ability to apply some basic filters to what I could see in front of me that I could very easily, very quickly turn on, turn off, change, tweak, you name it. And now you can do this in Todoist for the most part, and I love it. Now we have this whole new filter feature, and I've just resurrected this old project to show you. If you click this view button up here in the top corner, it gives you these different things that you can filter by. You can filter by assignee if there are multiple assignees within a project, or you can filter by due date, priority, or label. I find this extremely helpful. When I have a long list in front of me, and to be fair, this isn't that long, and I'm feeling a bit overwhelmed, I can immediately shrink that list down to only what I choose to see. So I use labels to categorize my work. Suppose I had an hour scheduled for communication and publicity work, 25 on my list, but three of them are communication and publicity. I can filter my lists to only that label and I have three tasks in front of me which is all I need to see and know about for the next hour. You just choose the label. Let's just pick um, the project one. And if I do that, then all I can see is the task with that particular label. Maybe I want to focus on only the priority one tasks, and that immediately filters the list down, or perhaps I'm only interested in tasks that are due within the next seven days. Now I know exactly what I need to do right now. You see, I find this one simple addition so much more user friendly and I love it so much. You know, if a meeting gets cancelled, I have a free hour and I want to tackle a big impact task, a click and only my priority one tasks are visible, or perhaps a meeting has been longer and more draining than I thought it would be. And so I need something quick and simple. I can now filter my lists to see those things really easily. The fact that you can apply these filters to any view that you have in front of you, whether it's a project, a label, or one of the other filters that I showed you, it's a big deal to me. So thank you very much, Todoist. Thank you. I do have some suggestions, things that I would love to see them develop. I've got two changes that I would like to see in the app in the future. This filtering system that I've just explained today, it only allows you to filter items with whatever attribute, not things without it. Recently, I wanted to filter out all tasks that had one particular label. Now, the only way to do that at the moment is to filter with every label except the one that you don't want to see. And that's really time consuming. So I would love to be able to select things and say, I don't want to see this, as well as selecting and filtering by things that I do want to see via this method. And then the second big change I'd love to see is, is with drag and drop. Whenever you view a project at the moment with all of the default view settings, you can drag and you can drop tasks to a different project or list in your sidebar very easily. But you cannot do this from any label view, from a filtered view, or from a search view. And you also can't do it from a project view 
if you apply anything other than the default sorting or grouping. It's a bit of a pain this, and so I would love them to improve this so that you can drag and drop anything from anywhere to anything really easily. Now if you found this video valuable, please do hit that like button down below. Please do subscribe to the channel. Sub subscribing and liking really does help this channel uh, grow and help my content get seen by more people. And check out these other videos on the screen now for more content. Thank you so much for watching.